What is happening, y'all? Cowboy here, and welcome to my split staff build for Neo 2, The Mighty Monk. So as you can probably guess from the name of it, this build is based around the Mighty Monk set, which is an absolutely phenomenal set, regardless of whether you're using the split staff or the switch glaive of it. This set is more than potent to absolutely blast through Dream the Strong and will definitely break you into Way of the Demon and beyond. So this is going to be working with seven pieces of Mighty Monk. We're going to be using Pit Vipers as well. Uh, wise General Box and Yasakani with Life Recovery, some of our standards with Weakness Barrier Protection, an Atlas Bear, which is a solid melee choice, and then Nupepo to ramp up our melee damage. Now before we go in depth into everything, I want to touch on where to get Mighty Monk, because a lot of people are farming it in the wrong spot. What you want to do is the Soul of the Warrior Monk mission. Now after you have beaten the main missions of the game, you'll be able to go to the interim and talk to Benki there. After talking to Benki, this mission will pop up. It's just a one-on-one -on -one fight against him. On top of being able to farm the smithing text for the armor there, you'll also get a guaranteed divine Benki split staff and Stone's Bane the first time you beat the mission on Way of the Strong. So that's actually what I'm using right now. I just scaled this up to 170, leveled it to plus 9. This one was 160 plus 2 when it dropped, haven't bothered leveling it. Uh, but that way you have those weapons, and then you can just go ahead and farm up the set. Obviously, we want to farm up the set for the lower stat requirements. One thing I wanted to add in is if you're not far enough to run a build like this, alternatively, you could actually use the Tonfa build that I had uploaded that works around the One-Eyed Dragon set. The One-Eyed Dragon with the damage bonus consecutive attacks is also an excellent choice to use with the Split Staff. This was the build that I used for almost the entirety of the DLC just to get through it the first time, and it is more than potent enough to absolutely blow through anything you're going to encounter on Dream of the Strong. Now, as for stats in particular, it's going to come with Corruption on it. You're going to want some Life Drain. I'd suggest Melee Attack, Attack Bonus of either Magic or Courage here. Those are going to be our two primary stats. The weapon's also remodeled for both of those, giving A- minus scaling in both. Um, melee key damage, active skill break, and grapple damage are my choices. Melee key damage is great because it's going to help my active skills, but also all of my other attacks, and I do a lot of just regular attacks with the, uh, the split staff. As for active skill break, the reason I went for that over regular break is break is going to be extra useful against humans, and probably one of the biggest spots this build suffers is breaking a human guard with your active skill. So I wanna be able to boost that as much as possible so that once I get them in a corner, they can't move and I'm going to shatter their guard and destroy them. Grapple damage isn't necessarily the best choice, but I love, 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 love the grapple of the split staff. Definitely one of the flashier grapples in the game. Um, probably the only one I like as much as that is the Tom for grapple. But anyway, uh, if you don't want grapple damage, you could instead go for more key damage on Dragon Dance, uh, but we'll leave that one up to you, whatever you wanna do. If you want to run the Switch Glaive, you certainly can. Just use some comparable stats similar to what I have here. Uh, as always, the Raven Rifle and the Warrior of the West Bow just to pick up the Life Drain Bullseye and Life Damage. Uh, moving on down into the gear. Now for Banky, we're going to be running Banky in everything except for the chest. Banky is actually the second heaviest armor set in the game, tied with Japan's Bravest. So adding the chest in and all of a sudden you need like an extra 60 stamina. So don't run the Banky chest, run everything but the chest. Um, so Hood, Gauntlets, Waste Guard, Greaves. And as for stats here, uh, we're going to go Attack, Dragon Dance, Inheritable, which I'll talk more about Inheritable skills and what I'd suggest a little bit later. Uh, beyond that, things like Omeo Magic Power, things like Untouched Omeo Magic are all going to be great here. This obviously has a lot of Omeo in this build, but right now I actually have item drop rate on everything. That's less than ideal for progression, but I'm trying to get all the DLC drops, so whatever. Uh, but some key things you want here are anything Omeo related. On your chest, obviously pick up the life recovery and rid absorption, any and gauge bonuses that you can get, whether it's defense or key recovery, that stuff is always good. You can also forge gear that have star effects now. I managed to forge uh, the, the Scampus Bell with a star effect, but I never use it, so I forged it away. But if you really want, you could forge up gauntlets that have like star effect dragon dance damage or something like that. So something to keep in mind if you're really trying to min-max this. Um, now, as for the chest piece, I like the Viper's Pit Robes because we're going to pick up the 5% active skill key consumption. Another really strong choice is going to be the Yadagarasu chest, which is also lightweight. That will net you the minus 10% dodge key consumption, so it's really going to be dealer's choice here, whether you want the dodge key consumption or the active skill key consumption. Moving down to our accessories, as always, Yasukani. Uh, very balanced Yasukani here. We have life recovery, defense bonus based on magic, and untouched elixir. 
further ramp up our defense bonus, taking that up to a higher scaling with it on this as well. Some elixir efficiency. Uh, you'll also have life recovery on red absorption on both of those, as well as, as the chest piece here. It's going to be a lot of life recovery coming on in. Now, when it comes to scrolls, scrolls are obviously going to be kind of whatever you can stumble into. Uh, extended dodge and vulnerability is great and strong attack damage because our strong attacks are where our active skills are as well. But life drain, melee kill, untouched elmio, elemental damage, something like this is also an excellent choice. Um, if you can't get that, just something that you can get melee damage on. This wasn't. This is what I started with and then I got this and then I got up to this. So point is, you know, run whatever scroll you can get. Um, as for our Omeo, our Holy Trinity here is Protection, Barrier, Weakness. Uh, weakness and Protection, both super helpful, breaking into Dream of the Demon. Barrier, because we're going to be bottoming out our key and then filling it back up instantly. Uh, beyond that, we also have a Flex spot here. Now, you could really run a couple things here. Life Seal's great. Sloth, always going to be helpful. Uh, if you want, you could do Fire Familiar just to make it easier to get up Confusion. It's really whatever you want here. Uh, life Seals are actually pretty expensive, so you do have a fair amount of Omeo capacity to work something else in. From the Ninjutsu side of things, Quick Change and Tiger Running. Uh, and then I have some Lantern Prude on. I just, I, I use these every now and again, so that took up my final slot. As for our Guardian Spirit, Atlas Bear is going to be our primary. And then beyond Atlas Bear, we are going to be working with one of the new Guardian Spirits, although we're never actually going to bring it on out. And that is Ho. Now, the reason that we want Ho as our secondary is he's going to give us an inheritable for high attack damage. So bringing him over, you can see 4%. And we're picking up an extra 5% yokai ability damage on Brutes. So just some nice stats there. As for Atlas Bear, he just works great with this build. You know, we have Brutes, so we can interrupt. And we're already on top of enemies, so that works well. Damage bonus low key. Has great synergy with Dragon Dance. Uh, melee damage 5%, obviously nice. And then Life Drain Grapple. As I already said, grapples with this weapon are super, super slick. Now, as for our soul cores, first up, we have the new fleshy boy, new Peppo. Now, new Peppo is actually crazy strong. He has a 50% damage buff he applies to you after you use him. It's going to last 20 seconds, but it's also going to increase the key cost of your abilities. Despite that, increased key costs aren't necessarily going to hurt us. In fact, they'll help us because it means we can get off our dragon dance buff even faster. Kasha is excellent because of the life drain on yokai ability hit on top of being very effective at applying fire. And then lastly, a Maelstrom Oni B. Whether you want water or lightning or fire is going to be up to you, but I think a Maelstrom Oni B is just always going to be a safe bet for your third choice. Now moving on from there into the stats, uh, this is a much higher level build. This is something that you should be making. Um, if you've already played through the whole game, you want to mess with, with Switch Staff to... Tackle the DLC on Dream of the Strong or start Dream of the Demon. Uh, obviously, Courage and Magic, our two stats, are both at 99. Having Dex at 11 is going to give us access to double Quick Change and double Tiger Running. Skill, we leave all the way down at base. Strength, we're going to be slowly bringing that up. It's up to 15 right now, but we're going to need to raise that as we level up our armor, and I'll explain that in a moment. Stamina, we can get away with only 32 since we don't have the Banky Chest. Uh, constitution is 20 just for a healthy amount of health and everything else I'm pumping into heart just to further ramp up my key and key recovery speed. Now, the reason that strength is going to be at 15 as opposed left to base, going on over into our blacksmith and remodeling with the armor in particular, the chest, we can go ahead and go reinforce here because it's only going to be one piece. If we go for refine on the chest, that's an extra six skill we're going to have to put in. Or excuse me, four points in skill because it's going to go up to skill requirement of ten. So I don't mind the extra three here. However, if we were to do uh, reinforcement on all of the heavy gear, adding point three to every single one of those pieces, that is a lot of extra stamina we're going to do. So instead, we're going to refine these pieces. We already have the stamina, and that's just going to bring our strength requirement up a little bit higher, which is fine, because we're getting some scaling on our weapon anyway. So all the heavy pieces do refinement. On the light chest, you can do reinforcement. Uh, moving on from there into skills in particular, honestly, pretty much every split staff skill is going to be great. In fact, the only one I'm not using here is going to be Shapeshift Strike because instead of using that, I have War Power on. Uh, War Power you can get from Fighting Banky. It's a hidden ability. It's really useful for popping off things that are far away. I like using it on the Oni B heads, things like that. Um, and honestly, Shapeshift Strike, it looks really flashy, but that long startup animation, how you just stand still and swing, if something's moved, you're just standing there like an idiot and then they boop you. So ultimately I decided to go ahead and drop that. 
Uh, now this build is heavily based around Dragon Dance, and Dragon Dance is going to be your highest damaging ability, hands down. This is the equivalent of the Kusarigama Reaper ability, but for Split Staff. And on top of that, we have the Dragon Dance too. So essentially when we're done, we tap square and it's going to give us a damage buff. This doesn't conflict with anything else and it just ramps your damage up even higher. If you don't like Dragon Dance, if you think it's too inconsistent, if you're just not feeling it, instead go for Unruly Revolution. To give a bit of a baseline comparison, Unruly would be hitting for about 350 a pop with each swing, whereas Dragon Dance would be hitting closer to 500 to 550 with each swing. So while Dragon Dance is significantly stronger, Unruly Revolution is going to be a lot more consistent. So something to keep in mind, kind of like the Reaper versus Bladestorm comparison, it depends whether you want more uptime on your target or a move that when you lock down your target can really decimate them. Uh, as for passives, I'd highly recommend all the stuff in the bottom. Melee damage against enemies with zero key. Grapple damage, as well as damage dealt from behind. Over here, we're going to max out the maximum key and then uh, reducing the key damage received while using the staff. All the health-based ones, Indomitable Spirit, Full Moon, Corner Tiger, I don't work with any of those. Haven't been a fan of them. Never have, never will. Um, as for titles, run whatever titles you want. I think touching on titles is kind of pointless. And as for the clan, uh, despite the nerf, Honda is still going to be a great clan for this build. On top of the damage taken at full health reduction, uh, the skill damage will still help this build out quite a bit. Right now, I actually have Gamma on for the consecutive hits damage bonus. That also works well. And on top of that, we have luck coming in from it. So Gamma is a pretty safe choice if you want to use this build for farming like I am and just slap life or uh, item drop rate on everything. Uh, but all in all, that's that's about it for this build. Um, last thing to touch on is some skill customization stuff here. Your two most popular abilities put on your damage boosts. So I have Dragon Dance with the damage boost magic, and then Twin Phoenix, I have the damage boost courage. Unruly Revolution, I'd highly suggest an Arcana. This move is phenomenal at applying Arcana. Can't stress that enough. As for our Mystic Arts, I like the Law of Lethality more. The basic gist here is Law of Argis is going to allow you to apply statuses a little bit faster. A uh, heavy attack and low stance will just barely not apply corruption with the law of our geese it would apply corruption so that's the big difference those extra hits you're not going to see damage numbers but you'll see uh, status and elements applied faster with it law of lethality on the other hand is going to be a five to ten percent damage increase depending on how far the weapon is extending out some of the low stance extensions you'll see a damage increase of around five percent some of the mid and high stance extensions you'll see damage increases around eight or nine percent so the basically the farther your staff is going the more damage it's going to do and as much as i'm extending the staff i find law of lethality to be a clear winner in this category uh, so that's going to wrap things up just to kind of show how it goes it's going let's give uh, give banky a run for his money we'll probably uh probably fight banky and then honestly i think what we're going to do is actually dive into a dream of the demon mission just to show how it handles itself there There can only be one Banky. And just just to put things in perspective, that was without us taking our 50% damage increase buff from New Pepo. That was without the New Pepo damage buff. Shit is silly. So I could sit here and absolutely stomp stuff in uh, Dream of the Strong all day, but you know, if you're if you're this far into the video, you're like, what about Dream of the Demon? That's what I want to know. So let's jump on over, mix things on up. I'm just gonna do uh, where is it at? One of the starter missions. That's here we go. Voice in Twilight. Nice short mission just to kind of show off how it fares. Well, keep in mind, Dream of the Demon, uh, ideally you can take this gear up even higher. Uh, for those curious, the level cap now goes up to 180 plus 20, which is what you'd want to be at working your way deeper and uh, more towards the end in Dream of the Demon. So obviously we're nowhere close to that, but at least for getting started in Dream of the Demon, 
uh, just where this gear is at right now is more than sufficient. time so as you can see dream of the demon also no match for the mighty monk uh, now I, one thing I want to touch on before wrapping up here Probably the biggest thing this build will struggle with is going to be humanoid bosses because we have a lot of damage around Dragon Dance and it's going to be harder for you to actually get that off on a humanoid boss. If you're fighting one, the best thing I would suggest is get him with your Lightning Arcana, get him with uh, your Corruption so that you get up Confusion and then go into your attack. Ideally, if you can push him into a corner, you'll still absolutely shred them, uh, but just in general, Human opponents are just going to block or scooch back, whatever the case is. Um, I actually don't have any good human opponents that I can show on Dream of the Demon right now, but uh, we can go over to... Uh, where's it at? There we go. We'll do this one real fast just to add one more. Tale of Tyra. This is a good example here. This one has uh, four different kind of elite human boss opponents that will fight. Just give you kind of an idea of what I'm talking about. Because honestly, that's probably the only weakness of this build, is because we've put so much emphasis around Dragon Dance. So, you know, it's just something you got to keep in mind that I want to make folks aware of. But despite that, I mean, as long as you're using your the other parts of the staff and not just purely relying on uh, your Dragon Dance, you'll do just fine. See, now that I got him in a corner. But the thing is, if you don't have them in a corner when you start that, it's usually not going to end well. For example, let's see, he's just going to stand there and back away. So this, this is the exact weakness that I'm talking about.
push him into a wall. And then go ham. So kind of as you saw right there, you know, if if we weren't able to get the humanoid into a wall, that's where we saw a little bit of a struggle. So anytime you're fighting human people, just keep that in mind. You know, yokai, you're going to be able to stun lock them in place and just absolutely obliterate them. But on humans, you might struggle a little bit more. So that's going to wrap things up for the Mighty Monk build. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments, and I'll catch you next time.